Good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and welcome to today's Fraud Prevention and 21-Day Booking Training. My name is Mark Krebs. I am a Gold Qualified Consultant with Team Sunset. I've been with Archer and Evolution Travel for the past 20 months, but I have been a travel advisor for the past nine and a half years. Um, this is a very important training tonight. Um, it, it is regarding the 21-day booking procedures that Archer has in place to protect us along with fraud detection and prevention, the winter updates. So tonight's training will have examples of um, what fraudsters are using in their emails and how to respond to those fraudulent emails um, as they are coming across your computer. So let's go ahead and get started here. Just some travel tips of the day. Um, always tell your clients when they're traveling to contact you immediately if there's anything wrong such as they have the wrong type of room, cabin, resort, something's wrong at the resort, et cetera. Make sure to get the name of the customer service representative that you are speaking with um, regarding the cruises, suppliers, or vendors that you are working with. And if you are a trainer or a mentor, advise your new agents on the 21-day booking procedures, just like I'm advising you today on those procedures. You may be an older agent in this training, but it is always good to have a refresher on the 21-day procedures as these are non-negotiable with Archer. You must follow them um, to the letter when booking with certain suppliers. So in the Travel Cafe, there is a tab on the left-hand side that says booking within 21 days of travel that has all of this information in it. So, but we're going to go through it step by step. So if you are booking travel for a client or for yourself within 21 days of travel, you must follow these steps. The reason for this training today is to clear up misunderstandings, to make the process easier for all of our agents, to make it faster to use for our agents, and to prevent travel fraud. So these two topics go hand in hand, hand in hand. So agent be aware is what the moral of the story is. Okay. So during the 21 day procedures, and 21 days of booking, this is where the most instances of travel fraud occur. And usually within a very, very short window of three to four days. So somebody who is in a hurry to book is when most, I'd say 90% of the cases of travel fraud occur. So that is why these procedures are in place to protect you, the consumer, you, the agent, and John Q. Consumer, whose credit card may have been stolen to be used in this fraudulent transaction. So that's why we're doing this training today as well. So let's take a look at this calendar here. So let's say you have somebody who, want, who contacts you on today, Wednesday the 6th. And they want to travel on the 14th. Okay. This falls into the 21 day category. So it is 21 days from the day they contact you till the day of departure. So in this case, it would be the 6th to the 27th. Okay, so if they want to travel in that time period, they would have to follow the 21 day booking procedures. You would have to follow the 21 day booking procedures. Now, this only applies to these particular um, vendors, okay? And most of these are within VAX. So, Apple Vacations, American Airline Vacations, AM Resort Collection, Beds Online, Blue Sky Tours Hawaii, Funjet Vacations, Pleasant Holidays, Ski.com, Southwest Vacations, Travel Impressions, United Vacations, and Delta World Agent Direct. These are the only 12 vendors that must follow the 21-day procedures. So that does not mean that Expedia Tap or Vacation Express or Pleasant Holidays 
has to follow the 21 day procedures. You can go ahead and book your client with those vendors and not have to send this information to Archer. But if you are booking with any of the 12 vendors listed here and on the travel cafe, within 21 days of departure, you must send the completed credit card authorization form and booking information to Archer Travel to get their approval. And they will turn it around within 24 hours, usually the same day. This does not include on a holiday. Let me say that again. This does not include on a holiday. They received um, several 21-day booking requests on Thanksgiving Day. The offices were closed. Thanksgiving Day, the day after, and through the weekend. So those requests were not processed. Okay, so make sure that the office is going to be open, and they are there Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, in order to process these requests. You can find the credit card authorization form within the Forms tab. Um, on the Travel Cafe as well. So that is where you go to find the credit card authorization form. And you find it under the booking within 21 days tab. Now, this is how you fill out the credit card authorization form. And it must be filled out completely and accurately. Okay, and we all should know how to fill this out. You as the travel agent must fill out the top of the credit card authorization form, including your business name, your business address. This is the only time that you must put your actual home address on any type of form for Archer Travel because this is an official document that may have to get sent to the credit card company to fight a chargeback or a fraudulent charge. Your city, state, and zip code, your business tele phone number and your email address, the client's name, your name as the independent contractor, the guest name. And now this is the name of the client or the person traveling, the trip type and the supplier name, the confirmation number or the booking number, also known as the booking number and the departure date and the return date. Okay. Your client is going to fill out the rest of the information. They're also going to attach a copy of their driver's license or passport and a copy of the front of their credit card with the numbers blacked out. Okay, let me say that again. They're going to attach a copy of their credit card with the numbers blacked out. They do not have to show the numbers on their credit card. That is a point of contention that was made um, several weeks ago in our team chats. And I clarified that with the office and the numbers can be blacked out and must be blacked out in order to be transmitted electronically, legally. So tell your clients that, say Mr. and Mrs. Client, we do not need to see your full credit card number. We just need, it to show the name of the credit card holder on there. If the numbers are on the back of the card, then they need to send a copy of the back of the card with the numbers and the CVV2 code blacked out as well. Because you are going to get that information verbally from the client. So no, okay. no number can show, just the name on the card is what we need. Correct. Okay. What if they make an act? What if they just say, for instance, um, hi, Mark, uh, what if they make, make an accident and give you um, and miss a number or give you the incorrect number? Um, how Then you have I mean, to go back to the client and clarify it. Yeah, okay. if they accidentally give you an incorrect credit card number, then you go just simply go back to your client and say, can I verify this number with you? I believe we have an incorrect number. How do we okay. know if the number is wrong? Will it go through if it's wrong? No, it will not. Okay, so that's it'll how get we... It'll get declined. 
All right. Yep. What what if they're using another person's uh credit card but it's allowed by that uh holder but then that person has to be the one to call you. You okay. must get that third party's authorization and then you're not going to take it. Because you do not want to take a third party authorization on a 21 day booking. Oh, okay. So if it's uh, within 21, we cannot allow a third person who's not part of the trip to give the credit card as a form of payment. Correct. With uh, whoever is booking or part of the of the group. Correct. That is just one way to combat combat fraud. A red flag should go up if it's somebody else's name on the card. Okay, whether it's the parent, the grandparent, whoever. If you know the people personally, then it's okay. But if you do not, then I wouldn't do it. I would oh. protect yourself and not take it. Oh, what if it's outside 21? It's more than a month. Is it okay? And we don't know the... It's the okay, but you've got to be wary. Uh, Rebecca makes a good point in the chat saying that I would not accept it from anybody as long as it's a third party. And that's my policy too, is if it's a third party, I don't take a credit card from a third party ever either, just because it's too risky because it could be fraud and it could come back on me. Unless I know it's a business or a business account is fine if I know it's a bit legitimate business and I've vetted them and I've done my research on them. Then I will take a corporate credit card, which is considered a third party, but it's a corporate card. But usually they'll give me the cardholder's name on that corporate card. So there can only be one credit card authorization form, not two Correct. The third party cardholder. No. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So the client's going to fill out the remaining information and it has to have an actual signature. It can be electronic, but it cannot be typed in. So you're going to use a PDF reader such as Adobe Acrobat, um, which will allow them to fill and sign electronically on their device, on their phone. Or your client can download, print it, Fill it in by hand, sign it by hand, scan it, and resend it to you. Okay, so it has to be a physical signature on the form. So what if, like, you know, uh, iPads have good notes, and I love those. Uh, what if I was to sign the, have the PDF in my good notes, sign it on my iPad with the, you know, with the Apple Pencil, Mm -hmm. And then just export that out and send it to you. Would that be considered or that no? That is considered a signature. Okay. Yes, that is considered a signature because it is actually going to be your signature. It's the same thing on the Google tab. So I can sign it with my Google pen and then export it and send it back to my credit, to my agent if I was using a different agent. So or I just sign it on my Google tablet for my own travels so that I have an actual signature on it because I complete a credit card authorization for my own travels as well, just in, in case my credit card company fights the charge so that I show that it is a valid charge. So, especially if I'm traveling on short notice, which I try not to do, but sometimes it's necessary. So, but travel agents must provide Archer Travel with proper documentation from the client and the supplier to be covered under the Travel Protection Plus coverage that we receive as part of our membership dues. You must use an Archer Travel supplier listed through the Travel Cafe website and the client must have completely filled out their credit card authorization form. If you do not provide Archer Travel with the proper documentation, the travel agent is fully responsible for any chargebacks. So whenever you are 
doing this, you must use an approved supplier through Archer. And we have so many suppliers that are approved through Archer. If your mentor has told you to use a supplier, then they're going to be approved through Archer. Okay. But if you ever have a question about a supplier, call the office and they'll tell you if they're approved or not. They're there to help you. Or email the office at evocustomercare at archertravel.com and I'll put that into the chat right now. Um, follow up on the uh, previous question. So if it's yeah. like a mother, it's like um, uh, a gift for the family and then it's her card that's going to be used and she's not part of the travel entourage. So we can use her card. So we put her name on this authorization form. Yes. And then the primary person that you're talking to about the booking does that the same, their name goes on the on the form as well on the same form this authorization yes as the as the primary traveler where is it i don't see it so i'll show you here in just a minute all right okay thank we you we should have a credit card authorization form on here okay all right there we go so you see where it says guest name okay that's where it's going to go so the mother's name will go up here, I, and then uh, her name. Okay. And then the primary traveler's name will be right here. Under the guest name. And yes. And then hereby authorize the agent. Yes, your name. Okay. And then you're going to fill in the rest of this information. Okay. All right. Hey, Mark, would you send signature. me a copy of that to my email, please? This is, this is all in the travel cafe under four. Oh. Under form. Okay. Thank yep. you. This is all in the travel cafe. You just go to travel cafe to find this. Okay. Okay. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just the information of the card holder, not the passengers. It's going to be on the other form or whatever, right? Right. This well, this credit card authorization form is what has to get sent and be sent to Archer. All right. So, Liesl, this, um, you're going to fill out a credit card authorization form for everything, no matter if it is last minute or not. Right. So you have to have a credit card authorization form filled out for every transaction you do where you are virtually swiping the client's credit card. And for Evo Plus as well. For Evo Plus, My Profit Agility, everything. Anytime you are using a client's funds, you must have a credit card authorization form. So, and that also includes for your own travel as well. You must have a credit card authorization form. Oh. Yeah. Why? If it's the travel agent's uh, personal flight. Um, it's to protect yourself. Okay. It's just to protect yourself and also to protect it your commission. If you, are, if you are doing a package deal for yourself and your credit card company comes back and challenges it as fraud especially if it's a last minute thing it's just to protect yourself so and this is coming from Archer and Jose at Archer so it's just better to do the paperwork and to have it just in case your credit card company char challenges it okay. so I'd rather do five minutes worth of paperwork then deal with two weeks of headaches with my credit card company. Do we get discounts for our personal uh, travel? Yes, we do. And then we still get commission because we're no, not if not if we're using travel agent rates. Okay, all right. This, but is if just... you're booking the commissionable rates, then you'll get commission. Okay, but still, if we don't receive commission. We still do this for protection purposes. Correct. Okay. So, Mark, in my situation where you know that none of the hotels over there is through Archer, oh, well, affiliated with Archer, um, so that means that I would get commission back on my trip. Yes, you're still going to get commission back on your trip because 
you can book directly with the hotels and still get commission using Archer's IATA number. Okay. So, yeah, okay. you just book it and then add Archer's IATA number to your reservation and you'll, depending on the brand, you'll either get 7 or 10% commission back on it. Where would that, would I put that? Uh, because actually I have the, the hotels on, on, I reserved the rooms already and I'm going to pay once I get there, but where would I put that on the reservation? I just didn't call see the, that. Just call the main reservations number and ask them to add it. So who did you book it through? I went through, um, well, I did it myself, and that's that was with um, a Paradise City Hotel. Call them directly. Okay. Or email them and ask them to add it. Okay. Yeah, you're the second person I've talked to that is looking for Paradise City. So, yeah, email them directly and ask them to add it to your reservation. Okay, and one of the hotels that we're also going to be staying in is Marriott. So would I add that to... Um, Just contact Marriott's so main reservations number and have them add it. I think I was speaking to you about this booking, Marilyn. Uh, yes, you were helping yeah. me with it, actually. Yeah, just call Marriott and add it to the reservation. Okay. And they'll be more than happy to do that for you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so that is the 21-day booking procedures, guys. So are there any other questions about 21-day bookings before we get into travel fraud? I got on the call late, so I missed the beginning portion of it. That's I'm fine. Sorry. It's recorded. It's recorded. Okay. 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 So what is travel fraud? Travel fraud are schemes for making money by deceptive, dishonest, or fraudulent means. For example, in travel fraud, victims are told by email that they have won a free or incredibly cheap trip. However, these trips often have hidden costs. Tours that are advertised as free may not include airfare to the departure point or hotel accommodation. The recipient of the, quote, free trip is required to make these extra reservations through a specific company. In these instances, the costs are much higher than the market price. So Jose gave this example in his training last week. His ex-mother-in-law said to him that she got him Disneyland tickets for four for $200, which we all know if you've priced Disneyland is absolutely impossible. Jose told her that she had been scammed out of these tickets and she had gotten these off of an advertisement on a Christian website or on a Christian radio station in Burbank. So that is one example of travel fraud. And I'm going to give you guys some other examples here in just a few minutes. So fraudsters are very adept at figuring out ways to get to the public. What is a chargeback? Online shoppers can deliberately abuse the chargeback process to get something for free. Hotel booking and airline ticketing chargebacks are rampant and they can affect travel intermediaries as well. As well. For example, a customer purchased an expensive vacation package through a travel agency, but even one aspect of the experience can make them a demand a chargeback on the entire vacation. So let's say that somebody books a $6,000 package to the Dominican Republic, okay? But their air conditioner wasn't working for two days. Maintenance tried to fix it. The resort moved them rooms. But because of those two days that they weren't able to have AC or one day that they weren't able to have AC, they demanded a charge back from their credit card company on the entire vacation. That is an example of chargeback fraud. Okay, so that is another example of, of fraud in the travel industry. Fraudsters prey on travel agents, especially new agents, and those who have their guard down because they are trying to book at the last minute. 
Travel agents are especially at risk with big ticket items such as lavish vacation packages, which combine air and hotel. And I'll give you a couple of examples of those here in just a minute. So let's say that you are getting a Facebook inquiry and you live in Detroit, but this inquiry is coming from Seattle. That's a red flag because you don't know how that person found you. Or somebody only wants to use email and never wants to talk on the phone. Check the time of the email and the origin of the email. There are ways that you can do that online. Red flag. The booking is too good to be true. Another red flag. $5,000 trip to Paris last minute. Big red flag. They won't fill out the credit card authorization form. That is a huge red flag right there. They're in a hurry to book. Or they need to travel tonight, tomorrow, or the next day. Those are red flags, guys. And again, I've got examples of all of this coming up here in just a few minutes. You need to be very, very careful when it comes to who you are dealing with. Don't waste your time with international inquiries. Okay, stick with people based in the U.S. Unless you have personal relationships with those people who are international, do not take international inquiries. Stick with those in the U.S. Be suspicious of all inquiries that you don't know from other areas and states. Are we even eligible or able to take inquiries from outside of the U.S.? Oh, absolutely. We can? Okay, absolutely. I didn't know if that was legal or not. Yep, absolutely. Just all transactions you have to let them know are going to be made in U.S. dollars. I've got friends that live in Canada and the U.K. that I book for. So. I was lumping Mexico and Canada in and with the U.S. But yeah, if if they weren't friends in the U.K. and you had someone from the U.K., you would still book for them uh if they are friends of mine yes but, but otherwise no okay because there are travel advisors over in the uk that they can use so we can sell to anybody example from asia if we have friends relatives in asia and then they want to go to europe as long yeah. as it's dollars u.s dollars it'll be in u.s dollars yes okay you can book that for them as long as you personally know them. That's fine. Even if it's hotel only or excursion only? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. How about flights only? Yep. All right. Okay. Same thing, just like my training last night. It's going to be the same thing. They must fill out a credit card authorization form. And you're going to always charge a booking fee. These are ways to prevent fraud, and I'll give you an example of that here in just a minute. All right. Yes. So for those of you who were in my training last night, you guys got a copy of my booking fees that I charge. And this has saved me more than once when it comes to fraudsters. You want to always connect with your client via phone. Okay? Never do it with email only. Fill out a, the Archer credit card authorization form with them. Always get copies of the ID, passport, driver's license. Check all of your referrals with from Facebook with your family. If somebody says, I was referred by your family, make sure to check on that. Because you never know if that's true or not. And when in doubt, contact your upline. So your gold or your platinum leader or your mentor. Or Archer Travel. Archer is there to help us, guys. You are not bothering them by asking them these questions. Ask for Susie in the office. She is our fraud prevention and detection specialist. Or ask for Jose. He has been doing this for a very long time with Archer. But anybody in the office can help you. So these are a couple of examples here of fraudulent documents. 
Okay, so this is John Connolly. Okay, but look at the signature on the on page three. It's signed by Amber. That doesn't make sense. This is a fraudulent passport. Susie also found this. The coding on the passport is incorrect. So this is a fraudulent passport. So make sure that you are matching up everything. Signature. And the spacing and everything. And when in doubt, send it to the office. This next example, look at this credit card. Write down here the numbers below the 4408. This is highly unusual for a credit card. So this is one type of fraud right here. The card again is signed by Amber. Red flag number two. Red flag number three is the Visa logo on the back. No card has the credit card logo on the back. Okay. So again, another fraudulent card. Here are a couple of examples of fraudulent emails. Hey, I'm reaching out because I've attracted a large pool of potential travelers and I'm interested in forming an alliance with a travel or tour agency in your region to refer them. For the next 30 days, we'll provide you with an unlimited stream of travelers at no cost, and then we can take it from there. Do you believe it's worth having a conversation about this? If you're interested, just reply with your cell and we can chat about it over the phone. Otherwise, you can book a call on Calendly, simpler and faster. Okay, look at this link, guys. This is not a Calendly link. Red flag number two, link is safe to click. Do not click this link. You're going to get a virus. They're going to hack into your system. You're going to be in trouble. If you don't get a response, feel free to WhatsApp me at 852-whatever-whatever. Sincerely, Nick. Jose also got emails from Muhammad or Mahmoud, Felicia, and Ahmed. Okay, he got four of these emails. This is his example. Now, here is mine that I submitted to him. Okay, here's red flag number one. It got sent back direct from Adam Kane to Adam Kane. Okay, so this guy sent it to me on Sunday, November 12th. And I forwarded this to Jose for this training. Hello, I need a quote departing from Lagos to Toronto on the 15th of November and returning on the 30th of November, 2023 for one adult, including one room at any three-star hotel for the first two nights in Toronto. Flight should be an economy class. Kindly forward your findings, i.e. itineraries and fares to me as soon as possible and advise the type of credit card your company accepts for payment. I look forward to your reply. Kindest regards, Adam Kane. Okay, red flag number one. It did not get sent directly to me. It went through a blind carbon copy process. Okay, number two, Lagos, Middle East, Africa. Okay, 90% of the emails that I get are from this area. Number three, look at the date. Look at when he wants to depart. The 15th of November, so within three days. Red flag number four. Only two nights in Toronto. That doesn't make any sense on a 15-day trip. Okay? So this was my reply to him. Good evening, Adam. Before I start working on this quote... I will require a $100 research fee up front due to the urgency of the trip payable to me by Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover. I will also need you to sign my credit card authorization form for that transaction and a copy of and attach a copy of the front and back of the credit card being used, clearly showing your name and the first two pages of your passport as well so that I have these documents to work from when booking this trip for you. When I book this trip, I will require a 10% service fee in addition to the price of this trip for the work that I will be doing on this trip for you. Please forward this information to me as soon as possible if these terms are acceptable. Okay? This was my response back to the guy, to the fraudster. I shut him down not once with a $100 research fee, 
not twice, with the credit card authorization form up front, third time requiring the credit card, fourth time with the passport, but the fifth time by requiring a 10% service fee in addition to the price of the trip. Five different ways I shut this fraudster down in one email, in a matter of two paragraphs. Okay, so that is how I protected myself and my business from getting caught up in a fraudulent email scam. I had, I never heard back from this guy. I knew it was fraud from the beginning. So I decided to have a little fun with him. <laughs> Normally when I see these, I will make this an outlandish amount, like 200 bucks, something like that. Especially if it is, if I see an email coming from somebody and then to somebody, the same person, that's how I protect myself. I've learned in the nine and a half years what to look for as a travel agent. Here's another example of a fraudulent email that I received from a Joel Barnes at Wozniak Interior Designs to dbryant at dreamvacations.com. That's not my email address. But it came to me in a blind carbon copy. Dear flight agent, red flag number one. My name is Joel, and I'm the owner of Wozniak Interior Design. I've been in Accra, Ghana for the past 14 days on holiday. Red flag number two, Ghana, Africa. Whoops. And I'm interested in purchasing tickets for myself and three friends to Johannesburg. Red flag number three, Johannesburg, South Africa. We'd like to depart from Accra, Kotaka, International Airport on 26th of November. Red flag number four. Again, the flight time, the dates, to Johannesburg International Airport on December of 9th. We've already booked a flight back to the U.S. from Accra after this. Red flag number five. In addition, we would also like to book a hotel for 10 days in the Johannesburg area with two rooms and two double beds per room, preferably a Hilton or Marriott hotel near the airport. I would be grateful if you could email me a grand total pl cost plus taxes, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for your help. Sincerely, Joel. Okay. So that was another fraudulent email request that I received in November. I got seven of these in November, guys. Seven in one month. So I wanted to share those with Jose so that he could use them for his training so that other agents know what to look for. And that's why I'm sharing them with you guys tonight. Yes, yeah, scammers are fun, fun to mess with. So I've got an animation here that's going to give you guys a, an idea. This is an older animation from Archer that Jose used. And I wanna play it for you guys. Because it gives some good perspective to the fraud and prevention checklist to keep you guys from getting defrauded yourselves. It's about a four or five minute video. So I'm going to turn off my camera, but just watch the video for me here and I will be right back. Whoops. I'm actually not going to be able to do that. Um, it didn't come over in the PowerPoint. So, um, sorry about that. If you guys are interested in the animation, just private message me. You're, you can actually find it in the um, Travel Cafe under Fraud Prevention. So, you guys are able to watch that. But it's a cute little animation. This is Jose here. Um, it's, it's pretty funny. So I didn't put the video in. That's my fault. But for helper questions, guys, you can always call Archer or email them or email Jose directly. This is their contact information. So for general helper questions, it's Evo Customer Care at archertravel.com. These are the numbers to the office. 
or you can email Jose directly at joseel at archertravel.com. I'm going to go ahead and put my contact information into the chat box so that if you guys have questions, you guys will be able to reach out to me as well. And I'm also going to put my YouTube into the chat box so that you guys can come back and watch this video as you need to, to get a refresher. Mark, I just want to uh, clear up. Uh, I know that if you click an email, you are prone to getting, you know, the phishing, you know, all those um, identity fraud what what else because they're the ones who's supposed to give the money we're not the one giving payment information right so if you're clicking on links in an email okay. that's the difference okay so do not click on the links in a suspected scam email like okay, okay so it's like this not... one here yeah okay so it's more on the security, not about the payment. Okay. Right. Yeah. Do not click on this link. And especially if it says link is safe to click. Mm -hmm. Because that link is not safe to click. But it shows here Calendly on the link here on this. No, it does not. The first, uh, on the first line on the uh, far end, right? Yeah, but it, but a typical Calendly link and I'm going to put my Calendly into the chat box so you guys can see what a typical Calendly link is going to be. Uh huh. Oh, he does have Archer Travel, Jose. Yep. <laughs> travel. You guys can actually use my Calendly link. This is what a typical Calendly link looks like, uh, and it's in the chat box. Okay. So, and you guys can use your cal this Calendly link too to set up a meeting with me if you have more questions about this topic. So I'm more than happy to go over it one-on-one -on -one with you guys. Are there any questions regarding the 21 day booking procedures or fraud detection and prevention that I can answer for you guys right now? And feel free to unmute yourselves if you need to. You made me nervous, Mark. <laughs> Don't get nervous. If you have questions, go through your upline, go to your mentor, go to your gold agent, go to your platinum, come to me, go to the office. Because we're all here to help you. Okay. Okay. Mark, what about on Facebook? If we post on Facebook, all our informations are there, name, email, phone number. Mm -hmm. Fraudsters will try to get you there, too. I've been getting notifications at least twice a week saying my Facebook business page is violating um, the intellectual property guidelines, which is not true at all, So, and that my page will be getting shut down. It's not true at all. I just delete them. They're trying to get me to pay them money. Hey, sometimes those are real because I've been in Facebook jail many times. Yeah, no, these are not coming from Facebook. They're, oh, they're coming they're from random the people. Spam. Yeah, okay. they're spam. I get them all the time. I'm like, if I don't know you, which is really hard for me when we're dealing with uh, emails from vendors and stuff. Because I'm like, oh, spam, spam, spam. And I got to slow down now and actually look. Yeah, no, because... Facebook wouldn't, Facebook would not direct message me. Oh, no, they're, they're not going to direct message you. Yeah. yeah, no, you get a pop up on your screen. But yeah. working with Apple, when I worked at Apple doing tech support, um, you can hold people's phones for ransom. And we would get those those messages and calls every day. Mm. Like uh, someone 
took control of my phone and now I can't access anything and they want so much money for it. Mm -hmm. It was awful. Yeah, no, I get, I get the messages saying that I violated intellectual property laws when it comes to my Facebook account. Um, at least three times a week now yeah, on my if, Facebook business page. If you did that, then the actual, you would get a cease and desist and all no, that no. other good stuff, you know. Yeah, and I don't use Facebook's information on any right. of my posts, so. But are there any other questions tonight before we wrap things up? Um, Facebook won't ask for money, right, to pay. No. No, 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 no. Wrong usage you do, right? Right. Okay. All right. Good to know. No, they'll just shut your account. They'll shut your account down after a warning or two. Okay. Nope. Those are scammers trying to get money. Well, I want to thank you all for being here on the training tonight. I hope you guys uh, learned something. Um, and we'll apply these principles uh, in your daily business transactions. Um, if you guys do have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me or to your mentors in your upline or to the office. Um, if you ever have any questions, um, I did put my contact information up top, my Facebook, my cell phone number. Feel free to reach out to me either way. Um, I did put my YouTube in there so you guys can go back and um, watch this training again if needed. So thank you all very much for spending part of your Wednesday night with me. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your holiday season. I will talk to you at my next training next Tuesday night. It will be on Evo Plus at the same time on this same Zoom. So talk to you guys again next Tuesday. Um if you do have further questions, I am doing Q&A tomorrow for Team Empire um, at 4 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow on our Q&A. So thank you guys very much and have a great rest of your holiday season and a great evening.